Hello, my friends. Um, I have got another doodle video for you. Um, pardon the hair. I've been playing outside the garden all day because we've had nice weather and I needed to get outside and play in the sunshine for a little bit. So that's what I've been doing today. Um, but I wanted to try and get this video done for you. I've been working on it for a couple of days. So I have some new doodle ideas for you. Hold on one second. Ha, I didn't have it in reach of the camera. <laughs> um, on my Instagram, a week and a half or so ago, I posted this doodle and this doodle and asked you to choose which one you'd like to see a video on and I got so many comments that said both that was my intention all along the voting was to see which one we would do first this one is the one that won so I'm going to show you in today's video how to do some of these additional doodle patterns and where I started with this one because it's different than the last set of videos where we started with a scribble we're not going to start with a scribble this time. And I'm also going to show you um, an interesting way to add some color to the background without having to feel like you're coloring in every little piece like a coloring book. We're going to do a little bit of watercoloring if you have watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, um, don't stress about that. You don't have to run out and buy them unless you absolutely want to. Um, by all means, art supplies are good. <laughs> um, but I don't want you to feel like you have to buy something new just to do this if you don't have it. So. The watercolor bit on the background is just an extra idea because ideas are good. So for this one, um, same basic supplies as we used last time, piece of paper. If you're going to do the watercolors, I recommend you do this on watercolor paper. If you're not going to use watercolors, any paper um, will work. Um, if you want to use markers, uh, colored pencils, you know, whatever to color in, just use paper appropriate for that. So paper, watercolor paper if you're going to use watercolors some watercolors if you want to try this background and the watercolors don't have to be anything fancy they can be you know if your kids got a watercolor set that they use in school you could use that it would work because we're just gonna kind of lay down a background wash of color black pens um, the pens I use again I lost my other one are the Uniball I fine and the Uniball Deluxe Micro. These are both ballpoint gel pens. I love them because um, the tips don't deteriorate over time like a felt tip pen does, like the, the Pigma Microns and, and things like that. So the tips stay intact. I like, I like the feel of a ballpoint pen better. And they're both waterproof, which means I can draw with them on the white paper, let them dry real good, and then I can watercolor over the top if I want to. In this case, we're going to do watercolor first. It doesn't really matter, but I, these are the two pens I use all the time. So they're mentioned in the description of the video as well so that you'll see what those are. Um, we might want a Posca white paint pen to come back and do some embellishments with. And um, I've got some circle making tools because we're going to do circles in this one. And I'll talk more about these when we actually get into the video. So with that, I'm going to flip you around here in just a second. Um, if you want to watch it all first and then draw, you can do that. If you want to draw with me as I go, um, absolutely do that as well. I would just ask that. Remember, like last time, the whole point of doing these drawings is not necessarily to create a masterpiece. This, this type of drawing we're doing to um, kind of quiet... The mental chatter to to maybe shift something that doesn't feel good into something that feels a little bit better um, allowing ourselves space to breathe and to relax so this is this is very much um, kind of a, a meditative practice almost so before you sit down to draw make sure that you're someplace where you're not going to be interrupted every five minutes get yourself a snack get yourself something to drink put on some nice soft music if you want um, and just give yourself some time to draw. If you don't have time to finish the whole video, because this one's probably going to be closer to an hour by the time it's done. I think the others were all about 20 minutes. Um, if you don't have time to watch it all through at one time, don't panic about that. Don't stress about that. Watch as far as you can. Draw for as long as you can. Pause it. Shut it off. Pick up where you left off the next day. That's part of what I love about doing these types of drawings is that you don't have to sit and do it at the, at all at one time. Um, this, this one that we're going to do took me probably about an hour and a half overall to do by the time I got it all done. There's lots of little circles on it. Um, if you don't have an hour and a half to sit and do it, that's fine. If you don't have 
45 minutes to an hour to watch the video. Just watch as much as you can, do as much as you can in whatever time you have. If you need to do it in 15, 20 minute increments, do that. Taking those little increments, those little time increments to be creative is better than not doing it at all. Okay, so I'm gonna flip you around and we're gonna get started. Okay, so here's how we're gonna start with putting some watercolor down first before we doodle. Um, and like I mentioned before, if you don't have watercolors, you could always use colored pencils to do a multicolored background or something like that. I just happen to be a fan of watercolors. So I've got a piece of watercolor paper. It's just um, an inexpensive watercolor paper. I got it at the art store when it was on sale that I used to, to kind of play around. I like it because it's not really textured. It's, it's um, on the smoother side, so drawing over it is really easy. And I'm going to tape it down to a canvas board. You can buy these in multi-packs at most art and craft stores and it's just it's canvas on one side and paper on the back. I like to use these because you can get them cheap and they come in multi-packs but really anything would work. A glass cutting board, a piece of um, solid cardboard, anything that's that's stiff and going to hold this. And the reason we're doing this is because water, the water and watercolor are going to warp this paper a little bit and I want to hold it down while I'm putting the watercolor on. I'm gonna tape it down. I like to use the Scotch wall safe tape because it pulls back off really easily without ripping the paper. You could also use masking tape or washi tape or painter's tape. Um, if you use any of those last three, I would recommend um, like maybe peel the piece of tape off and stick it to the leg of your pants or the arm of your shirt first and get a little bit of fuzz on it. Um, because those can often be so sticky, they tear the paper when you take them off. So I'm just gonna tape this down. I'm not really measuring my border. Um, I'm just doing it about half the width of the tape. This does do another neat trick. If any of you um, have not watched any of my watercolor videos, this is also gonna create kind of a faux frame around our drawing, which is kind of nice. It, it gives it a really nice finished look when you're done. So I'm just going to tape this down all four sides, really pushing down with my thumb to make sure those edges are down because I don't want the paint to bleed under. I want to have a nice crisp line there. Okay, so I've got that down. The next thing I'm going to do, I've got an old um, hair product bottle that I just filled with water and I'm just going to spray that paper with water to get the whole surface nice and wet. You could do it with a paintbrush if you wanted to, just brush the paintbrush over it with water. Um, oh goodness, I used, I used some pigment salts earlier and they must still be kind of floating around in the air because there's little bits of color on my paper. Um, and then you can use whatever watercolors you've got. Um, this is my Daniel Smith set and I've really been kind of fond of pinks and greens and turquoise blue. So that's what I'm going to use and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on my brush and just kind of swipe it around here and there. I don't want it to be really, really dark because I want my black pen to show up over the top of it. So you can use whatever colors you like on this. Just be aware that if you're using darker colors, um, you might end up having to do your doodles with a white pen instead of a black pen because black pen doesn't show up very well over the top of dark colors. So I'm just kind of splash and paint around. I think I'm going to use three different colors. I've really been liking these three colors lately. Um, they're kind of springy looking, aren't they? So I'm just kind of splopping the paint around. I'm not really doing any kind of design. I am putting them on fairly lightly because I want, um, whew, that got dark. I want my black pen to show up over the top. So I'm just putting some colors on. If you've got um, a good bit of water on it, let's put some green here and some green over here. If you've got a good bit of water on it, you can tip it up, tip it to the side, let those colors run a little bit. If you want to give it a little bit of extra interest, you can also wash your brush off and then bring back just a wet brush and tap it. So you're tapping spots of water on the paper and if I zoom in you can see what tapping those water spots does it um, makes these little 
areas where the water pushed the paint away. So I'm just going to set that and let that dry now. It'll take, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. If you are in a hurry, you can always um, blow dry it and dry it quicker. So I'm just going to let it sit for now and then we'll come back and do some doodling over the top, okay? Okay, so I am back. My background is dry, completely dry. So if you did the watercolor background, you notice the paper kind of wrinkled and buckled and did some weird things. As it dries, it should flatten back out. So I don't need to keep it attached to this board for the rest of the drawing. So I'm gonna peel my tape off and get rid of the board. So I've just got my piece of paper and then we'll start the doodles, but I wanna show you this real quick. Um, I mentioned at the very get-go before we started putting the watercolor on, if you did that step with me, um, that it creates a really nice border around your paper and it gives it a really nice finished look. So hopefully you can see here, I've got this nice straight edge all the way around. So it gives it a really nice finished look when you're done. So I'm just gonna put my board off to the side now. The one we're gonna play with, or the ideas that we're gonna play with tonight, come from this one. I haven't added any color to this one because I wanted you to be able to see the drawings. Um, so rather than starting with a scribble like we did in the first video series, this one I'm gonna start with just a few straight random lines. And then I'm going to come back with circles. Now you could do this with whatever shape you like. I happen to be a fan of circles, so those always make their way in and that's just kind of my happy place. But there's certainly no reason you couldn't do this with triangles, um, squares, you know, whatever shape makes you happy. And the design elements that I'm going to show you some, some fun doodle patterns will be like this one, this one. These are just to play on the wonky circles we did in the last video. We're going to do some writing. This guy, I really love this one. Um, this one is just an exaggerated version of this. And we'll look at this one. So we'll just kind of do some fun playing around. Um, really kind of letting this take us where it wants to. So to get myself started, I'm going to put just three or four straight lines on here. Um, I might make them branch off a little bit. And you can do them whatever direction you want to. In these, I went kind of the short direction. This one went across diagonally a little bit. Um, I think on this one, I'm gonna make them all go diagonal. And so you can curve them a little bit if you want. You can make them straight lines. You can make them cross. You can make them have little branches coming off. So something like that. You make yours go whatever direction you want them to go on your paper. And then we're going to come back and add circles to this. Now I have this handy little circle maker which has all different sizes circles in here and then it's got um, some little markers here so I could put my pen in one of those and spin it and make even bigger circles or I could use the outside as a great huge circle. If you don't have something like this um, back up if you want it. I got it on Amazon. It was like five bucks. You can just look for circle template or circle maker or something like that. And you should see a bunch of different variations of this one pop up. Um, if you don't have something like that, though, look around your house and see what you have. Things like canning jar lids. I have no idea what this is. It was in a drawer in the kitchen. Um, this one's kind of cool because you could draw around the outside of it and you could draw around the inside of it to make smaller circles. I've got a measuring spoon that actually lays flat, so I could turn that upside down and use that. So look around at things you have um, that you could draw around for a circle. You could even use something like the bottom of a jar. And look for things that are just different sizes. Um, I've got a preservative can. You could put that down, draw around the outside of that. So look for things like that, that you can trace around if you don't want to draw your circles freehand. If you want to do them freehand, absolutely do that. But I think part of the fun of this one is the imperfections of the lines 
and the spirals and the small circles. I didn't use anything to do the small circles. I just did those freehand. So kind of the, the imperfection of those and the outsides of these circles being a little more precise. And I think that contrast makes this one really interesting. So um, I would use those tools to draw circles. And essentially what I'm going to do is just start drawing random circles on here. So maybe this one I want to cross that line. So I'm just going to put that down and trace around it to give me my first circle. I really like this one because I can do two circles at one time. So I think I'm going to put this one, um, I'm going to put it so that the edges of that inside circle meet on my line right here. So I can draw the inside circle to touch the insides of those lines. And then I can draw the outside by tracing it like that. I'm gonna do another one over here. So you're just randomly gonna put these circles. And that one didn't go all the way around, so I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm not gonna worry about um, that little blip coming off of there. I'll put another circle or you know something there to cover that up. So you would just continue doing that same thing. And while you're continuing to draw those circles, um, keep in mind that you don't have to do full circles. You could uh, put maybe this one in the corner. Let me turn this a little bit so you can see it better. Put this one in the corner. And instead of making it a full circle, just go from the border of your color to the border of your color. So you have something like that. You can do the same thing um, on the lines. I'm going to use this and make the smaller circle just go from the line to the line so you end up with a partial circle and you can see some of these on the inspiration piece they are full circles here and there and um, this one is a partial circle so certainly do some that are partial circles and just vary the sizes of them all over the place um, you can put them behind each other. So I think with this one, I'm going to do a bigger circle, but I'm going to go from the edges of the smaller circle. So I end up with that one kind of looking like it's behind. And you can put as many or as few circles on here as you want to. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm going to put just a couple more on here. Um, so I'm going to speed this up while I do that. Okay, so I've got all my circles on there. Um, you don't have to hurry with that part. You can take your time and you know set your set your circle tools on there and kind of play around with them and see what you like. Where there is no right or wrong pattern to it, there is just simply what you put on there. And each time you do this, as with any of the drawings that we do, they're all going to look different, and that is completely okay. Okay. So the first one I want to show you is this one and I really love this because you get such dimension and it's such an easy thing to do so I like to do that one generally in a um, something like this circle or maybe like this one or somewhere where you've got a good bit of space to work with um, and you're essentially just gonna do lines and I think I think I'm gonna do it on this one right here so let me zoom you in on that so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is just pick somewhere to start and do two straight lines. So essentially, I'm, you think of like um, a stick laying on your paper. That would be my stick. And then I'm going to come back and do that same thing again, only I'm going to skip that spot so that it looks like it's going behind it. And I'm going to continue doing this until I fill that space up and get as many of them in there as I want. So I'm just going to continue doing that same thing, making like sticks going behind other sticks, going behind other sticks. If your lines don't line up exactly from one side to the other, don't panic because there's going to be enough going on. 
in the rest of the drawing that nobody's going to notice if those are a little bit off. And another thing you could do as well, um, on this one you can see I started narrower at one end and got wider at the other end. You could do that to give it just a little bit of extra um, pizzazz or what have you. So I might do that with this one. And then I'm just going to angle it out a little bit so it gets a little bit wider. So you would just continue filling up your whole space as much of those as you want to. And then to give it a little bit of dimension, I'm going to come back and on the ones that go behind, like this one right here, I'm just going to make some little hash marks with my pen on either side. Not really long, just a little short, guys, because that gives the illusion of a shadow and gives it a little bit of depth. So everywhere one goes behind another one, I'm just going to make those little hash marks. Now you could also add um, some additional shading there when you're coloring this in by doing a little bit darker, whatever colors you're using, where they go under the shapes above them. So there we go. Easy peasy. Little dimensional doodle. Before we go too far, I forgot one thing on this one. Um, you can leave those just like they are, or I find it looks like it gives them a little bit more depth if we modify the ends of them. So all I did was round off those ends, and we did rounding corners um, in the last set of videos. So wherever one straight line meets another line, I'm just gonna come in and do like a little partial U and round that off so that it doesn't look like a harsh 90 degree corner. So by rounding those off all the way around, everywhere those sticks meet the circle, you're gonna give it just a little bit of added illusion of dimension. Okay, so I finished mine off, did the rounding the corners, everywhere those lines meet the outside circle, and I also did it where the lines meet each other on the inside. It just gives it, like I said, the illusion of a little more depth there. Okay, next one I'm gonna show you is this one. And I like to do that one either on a, a full circle that doesn't have anything through it or something like this one where the line is fairly straight through it because I'm going to use that line as part of the basis of my design. So what I'm going to do on this one is just eyeball me a circle in the middle-ish. Um, if you did it off-center, it would look... Actually, this one is off-center, so you can see how it would look. <laughs> the ones on the bottom are a little smaller than the ones on the top, but it doesn't look bad. Um, so if you if you move your center dot one side or the other, you're going to get that little op lopsided look, but that's still fun. Like I said, there's no right or wrong to this. It's just how you prefer it. So with that dot as my center point... Um, I'm going to start drawing straight lines through it, kind of dividing it in four to start with, and then divide each of those in half. And if you want to do it again, you can divide those in half again. All that determines is how many of these little petals you end up with. So the more lines you put, the more petals and the narrower the petals. The fewer lines, the fewer peril, uh, petals, and the wider they are. So I think I'm going to leave that one like that for mine. Now what I do with these is round off the corners, only I do it bigger and more exaggerated than we've done in the past. I'm going to start at about the midpoint between these two lines and really accentuate that rounded off corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do that all the way around at each line and then I will color in this part up here at the top so what that's going to do is give me the look of rounded off flower petals without really having to try too hard you know to get the rounding just right so 
those colored in areas are these right here. So I'm gonna do that all the way around and I'll speed up the video for that part so you can see it a little bit faster. You do the same thing on yours. Okay, now that I've got all of my corners rounded, um, and you probably notice even in that sped up section, I turn my paper a good bit. Um, your paper doesn't have to stay in one orientation while you're drawing. Turn it so that you've got the best drawing angle for you, okay? So with that basically done, I'm just gonna come in and add some embellishments and you can add really whatever you want. I'm just gonna do some straight lines and dots Again, none of this is terribly complicated in terms of what it is that we're drawing. It's the, the conglomeration of all of them together that really adds interest and a fun look to it. It's not necessarily um, the complexity of what we're drawing. So I'm just putting some straight lines and some dots. Oops, I'll put two on that one. So we get something like that. So it's kind of a, a stylized looking flower. And then because there's a good bit of black around the outside, I will come back with my white Posca paint pen. And as always, the pens and stuff that I'm using are in the comments on the video so you can see exactly what they are. Um, I will come back with my white pen. If I can get my white pen to work and maybe put some little dots right around the outside just to break up that black a little bit. And because that little pop of white really adds a lot of um, interest to it, personality to it, okay? So there's design number two. Now, in the inspiration drawing, this one, and this one are real similar in how they were created. If you'll notice, you know, this one looks like petals. So does this one. The only difference is instead of starting in the middle, I started on the edge out here. Okay. So I'm going to show you that one real quick. I'm going to turn this so I get a good angle. But it's essentially the same process. I'm going to do it in my little corner down here. Um, I'm going to play off of the edge made by my tape when I did my watercolor. So it will be inside that. You could go all the way to the edge if you want, but I'm thinking this might end up getting matted and framed at some point. So I'm just going to use the edge of the paint as my edge marker. So I'm going to put my little midpoint circle here. And this one I'm only going to divide in three. And I'm just eyeballing even. They don't have to be exactly even. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before in rounding off my corners and coming about to the middle. Whoops. So I'm going to turn me at a better angle. Um, and then color this part in black again. Okay. I won't do that on camera just for the sake of time. You saw me do that before. Now this one the embellishments I added, I followed the contour of that rounding. So I just came down here a little bit and did U-shapes that kind of follow that contour up top. They don't have to be exact. I'm going to come down and put another row in. And then I'm going to put just a little tiny one, or one another one, just a little tiny bit up from the top and down from the bottom. So we get something like this. And I'm gonna color these in. So I have a dark black band at the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna come in and just put straight lines between the top and the bottom on each of these. I'm gonna come down here at the very corner and round those off as well. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> I really prefer things to be kind of um, flowy and rounded off. So that's what you'll see in my drawings. If you like the sharp corners, absolutely leave them sharp corners in yours. Okay, so I'm going to fill this in, speed it up 
so you can see what it looks like finished. Okay, so there we are done. And like on the other one, I would probably come back um, with my white pen and make some dots. My white pen is giving me grief tonight. So I'll probably come back and fix those off camera so I'm not taking up your time with that. But, you know, something like that so you get just a little more interest in them. If you wanted to add more embellishment in here, um, more lines, more dots, certainly go ahead and do that. These are just ideas and kind of jumping off spots for you. So there we go. It's starting to come together. Um, because I am starting to get a good bit of ink on my paper now, Remember, if you've got something like a Kleenex or paper towel or a scrap piece of paper, something like that, that you can put down to put under your hand while you're drawing, prevent yourself from smearing that ink around. I am notorious for doing that, so I always try to make sure I've got that, that handy. Um, the next one I think I'm going to show you is this one. We're going to put some writing in there. It can be whatever you want it to be. It can be a phrase. It could be a saying. It could be the same word over and over again. It could be gobbledygook letters. It really doesn't make any difference. And I think I'm going to do my letters maybe on this one. So let's get you zoomed in now. I can hear some of you going, oh, but my handwriting's terrible. That's okay. We've talked about in this process that your lines don't have to be straight and a little wonkiness here and there adds to the look. Same thing with the handwriting. It doesn't even have to be legible and it's still a cool look. So don't panic about your handwriting. Do it however yours comes out. If you can't read it when you're done, that's all okay. It still adds to the look. So don't worry about what your handwriting looks like. Okay. And I'm going to turn this just a little bit so I've got a better angle. Um, I think I think I'm going to use a saying something like um, what am I going to write? I don't know. <laughs> something like expressing creative ideas leads to more creative ideas because it does. Regardless of how you express them, the act of expressing them creates more creative ideas. So I'm going to put that in here and there's probably not enough words to fill that whole thing up unless I'm writing really big. So I may write the whole thing and then start it over and start it over. You, there's no reason you couldn't repeat. So you can use whatever words, phrases you want, or you can just do random letters and it's still going to look really cool. So I'm going to do something like that. So I'm going to start writing. Now you'll notice I don't have any spaces between my words and when I got to the end here I wasn't able to finish the word creative. So I'm actually going to start that word where I left off down here and continue. The reason I don't have any spaces in between is because I just like the visual look. It looks less like something somebody's supposed to read and more like just decoration. So that comes back to the idea of you know if you're not crazy about your handwriting don't leave spaces in between the words and it's going to look less like handwriting and more like just a design element. And I, you know, somebody's probably going to look at it and go, oh, that's cool. And not realize that there's actually something they could read in there. You know, they might have to come back to it and go, oh, hey, look, there's something there. So it's kind of a, a fun little hidden element too. So I'm just going to start the word creative down here and continue on. So expressing creative ideas leads to more creative ideas. And then I'm going to start over. And same thing, I'm going to skip this middle spot, so I'm just going to start where I left off.
So there we go. Oops. So I just used that phrase over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And whenever I got to the end, I started the next line where that last one left off. So reading it, um, it's broken up a little bit. It might, it might be a little bit of a challenge to read at first, but that's okay. I'm not necessarily writing it because I want somebody to read it. I like the design concept of it. So whether you print, whether you write cursive, whether you write neat, whether you write messy, whether you write in all caps, all lowercase, a combination of both, doesn't make any difference. You write how you write, and it's going to look like a cool design option on here. Okay? So the next one, let's see, what have we done on here? We've done that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Let's do this one up here. So this one is a line design, and it's really easy to do. I think... Where am I going to do that one? I think I'm going to do that one on this little guy down here. I'm just going to do half of it. Um, if you had a full circle, you would just do the same thing all the way around the circle. So kind of like we did on the one with the petals, I'm going to give myself a center point to start with. So in this case, because it's a little half circle and I'm using the line of my paint as kind of my boundary, I'm going to give myself a little starting spot right there. And then all I'm going to do is just draw lines radiating out to the edge of my circle. And it's really easy to, to kind of keep those lines fairly straight. Again, if they're a little wonky, it's okay, but we do want them to be straight-ish. So the easy way to do that is to just keep dividing that up into smaller and smaller spaces. Don't try and start here and go all the way around it. You'll get you'll get off and they'll start to curve. So divide your spaces up like into thirds or fourths and then divide those in half with a line and then come back and divide them in half again with a line. And just keep doing that, dividing them in half until you get as many lines as you want. Now you could stop with something like that but I like to put a whole bunch in there because something really interesting happens around this center point. So once I've got it divided about like that, then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of those. So I'm spacing them out a little bit on the top of my circle and I'm ending them all at the middle point. Now sometimes they're both, they're all gonna end right at the same point. So you end up going over this same spot a couple times and you can see how that's starting to get um, kind of darker right there. That's the cool thing that happens when some of these lines overlap at that center point, you get some interesting um, dark spots that look like kind of shadows or um, they almost give it a little bit of movement. So I'm going to turn my paper again so I've got a good drawing angle and I'm just going to fill these all in. And if some of them meet at the same point at the middle, that is completely okay by me. Flip this around the other way. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I've got that divided up into as many small spaces as I want. Now usually what controls that for me is the pen that I'm using. And you kind of you kind of judge by the width of your pen. Can I get any more lines in between there before I'm starting to fill them in and making them look solid with the pen that I'm using? In this case, I cannot. If I was using a finer point pen, I probably could, but I'm not going to worry about that. So there we go. And you can see where some of those lines start to meet at that center point, you get kind of this fan out looking effect. And I love that. Now the last thing I'm going to do is come around this outside edge, just in from the edge a little bit, and I'm just going to draw kind of a squiggly, wonky line all the way around the edge. And then I'm going to fill that in. So it just makes kind of a little border around that. And you can do this type of design on any of your circles or partial circles. And it looks kind of cool no matter how you do it. So what I love about 
the, the doodles that I showed you in the first video series and these that I'm showing you now is that they really are easy to do, but they pack quite a visual punch. Uh, there's a lot going on in that one doodle, but it didn't take us too terribly long to create it. It wasn't terribly difficult. So there we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. What do you think? Okay. So next one we're going to do is this one. And I like to do this one when I have a circle that's being split by one or two lines. Um, it's a real similar concept to this in that we're just going to be using straight lines, but they're all going to come to a point. And if you've got a circle that's split by one or two lines, you can vary where that point is. So where the lines all come together at that point is in different places and it gives it a little bit of interest. So I'm going to do that on this circle on mine. It's being split by two lines. So I'm gonna do basically the same thing we did with that last one. This is gonna be my starting point, but I'm not gonna make an exaggerated circle there because it's it's gonna kind of create its own point. So I'm gonna divide it in half-ish. And then I'm gonna do like we did on the other one. I'm gonna divide those into half and those into half. And everything is coming down and meeting at this same point. And so I'm going to continue doing that same thing, just like I did on the last one, splitting those parts into smaller parts, as small as the width of my pen will let me go. And because I'm bringing everything down to this center point, it starts to create um, its own big dark spot there in the center where some of the lines are crossing each other, or you're going over it multiple times, depending on the spacing. That's what creates the interesting part of this one. So I'm just gonna continue dividing that and dividing that and dividing that down until I don't have any more room. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other half, only I'm gonna flip it around and my point is gonna be over here. So I'm gonna flip this around just so I have, oops, where'd it go? So I have a better drawing angle and I'm going to put my Kleenex over this one because I just did that so that's still wet and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to divide this into pieces. Oops, look what I did. Shoot. I did it the wrong way and I'm off camera. Ha! Look what I did. I made my lines go down to there and that's not what I wanted. I wanted them to come here because I'm not paying attention. So I'm going to do it anyway. Um, there's going to be two lines running through it, but that's okay. Um, I should have had my point come down to here, so it's the opposite side of that one. So I'm going to divide these in half. We're going to ignore those two lines <laughs> running through there. <laughs> and I'm going to go in half again and do the same basic thing. And just continue dividing those down bringing everything to the point down here. And we'll see what kind of interesting thing we end up with with those two lines going the wrong way. Are those two lines going the wrong way a mistake? Should I throw it out and start over? Absolutely not. Why? because there's no right way to do this. All it does is end up looking like there's some kind of funky design in there. And what I can do if, when I get done looking at it, if it looks too weird that those two lines are there, I'll do the same thing on the other side and make it a mirror image. But you can see what we did there by this one going to the point here and this one going to the point here, um, the focal point moves. So it almost gives those straight lines the look like they're curving around something, okay? And I think just for my own sanity, because that is going to bother me with those two different or er, wrong way lines there not being over here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, what I did with those is make those go down to the point here. So I'm going to make two going down to the point here, just like that. So it mirrors the other side. There we go. Problem solved, crisis averted. If you end up with things like that, 
while you're working on your doodles. That's part of the nice part about doodles is that you can just add something else to it. Add more lines, color over it black. Um, you know, if I wanted to, I could come back and color that whole center piece in and it would it would have a different look yet. So there's, there's really no right, wrong mistakes. If you do something you don't like, you can always cover it up in a different way, add more lines, you know, something like that. So we've done that one and that one and that one and the ones with writing in them and that one and that one. This one and this one are really simple. I've just used curved lines to kind of follow the contour of what was already there to embellish it. So maybe on my little one with the handwriting over here, I'm going to do that same thing. So I'm going to flip it around so I'm at a better angle. So I'm going to start just in a little bit from each edge and follow my circle. And then I'm going to do it again here. Now this is a little bit different than in on the inspiration piece, but you'll get the idea. It just looks a little bit different depending on where you started. And you can start it wherever you want to start it. And then I'm just going to color in this outside ring and this little inside ring right here. So there we go. And I just realized that the door to my laundry room is open, so hopefully you can't hear my uh, my dryer bouncing around in there. <laughs> and if you can, I'm so sorry, but this is real life. My laundry room is right next to my art studio. <laughs> okay, so on the inspiration piece, it looked like this. This one was a full round circle instead of a partial circle. So I did the same basic thing. I just followed the contour of the outside and then put another one and another one in. Where you start and stop these is completely up to you. And then I came back with a white pen and made some dots on it. I don't know that I'm going to do white dots on these because I did them so thin, but I might decide that I want to do something like this to give it a little more interest. And I might decide that I want to put a little something something in there like that. So there we go. Um, the other one I'm going to do on this little circle over here. And it was fairly straightforward. I, I started a little bit above midpoint and made a curved line, ended a little bit above midpoint and then put another one in there. And then do the same thing down here. I probably should have made that top one a little thinner, but oh well. I'm going to color both of those in. And then I'm just going to put straight lines from one to the other. And I think on the inspiration piece I had some dots up top. So there we go. So all of these so far are really simple, just lines, curved lines, straight lines, dots, nothing terribly complicated. And it's starting to come together. So I'm going to use, you know, some of those same design ideas to finish filling these in. We probably won't do those on camera just to keep the length of the video reasonable. But what I do want to show you, because even though it's starting to come together, there's still a lot of space out here and it, it feels kind of disjointed. So that's where I like to add things like these little circles and the wonky spirals to pull everything together. And if you'll notice on this one, when I do the circles, they don't just adhere to a specific space. They kind of go off out over here and down here and, and kind of have a life of their own. Um, letting them wander around the page is part of what gives it a whimsical look. So let's do some of those right down here. These are super easy to do. I'm going to freehand these circles. I'm not going to draw, um, you know, use a template for them. If they're a little bit out of round, that's perfectly okay. 
I'm going to vary the size of them and I'm just going to put clusters of them kind of where, where these things meet each other. So I might do something like this and then another little one down there. And I'm just going to vary the size of these and put a bunch of circles all together in a cluster. And I'm going to try and make it kind of um, randomly shaped. I don't want it to look you know, like it's fitting in a V and that it's this nice patterned thing. And I will continue over here doing the same thing, varying the sizes and just kind of let it, let it be kind of organic. And then once I've got some circles in there, I'm going to come back and color in the spots in between. So if you've got a smaller tip pen, it might be useful depending on how close together these are. You'll notice that my circles are not perfect. There's some wonky ones in there. Completely okay. That adds to the look. I do not want them to be perfect. I want them to have a hand-drawn character. So as you add the black in between the ones that you've drawn, that's where it really starts to kind of fill it in and give it some weight. Um, I do often like to kind of round the corners where they meet each other on these outside edges just a little bit because it makes them look like they're all connected to me and I like them to look like they're all connected. It kind of looks like a, a glob of circles. Think like maybe a glob of fish eggs together or something like that. So. I would start doing those little circles all over the place in between where these things meet each other, right? And I'm also going to use the wonky circle concept from the first set of videos to add some embellishments here and there where I feel like I need to fill space. So for me, this spot in here is feeling way open. Um, I could put some circles in here and would fill some of that up, but it's still feeling like it's kind of way open for me. So I'm just going to come off of this circle, make kind of a curved line. And remember that wonky circle we did last time, our wonky spiral. I'm just going to do something like that. So it's spiral-ish, but not really perfect. I'm going to round the corner where that line meets the circle so that it looks more organically like it's coming out of that circle. And then at points here and there on my spiral, I'm just gonna kind of thicken the corners a little bit. Wherever the corners are sticking out, look like they need to be a little bit thicker. And that's just gonna give that spiral a little more character. And character is the name of the game. Now, when you're doing the corners on these wonky spirals, if they're not feeling like they're big enough for you, you could always come out and, you know, do something like that and fill it in to give yourself a little bit more to play with there and give it a little more character yet because we don't want these guys to be perfect we want them to look like a little bit of a fern unfurling or something like that so I'm gonna do those two things all over on this drawing to help fill in some of this blank space I'm gonna put circles more here, more here, some around here. I'm gonna add some more of those spirals in here and there to fill some of that blank space. Um, and just continue until I have as much as I think I want. And again, this is where you get to decide how much white space you're gonna leave, how much dark space you're gonna leave, and it's completely up to you what your eye prefers. Um, and you might notice on this inspiration drawing, my lines are thicker in some spots than thinner. What I did with that, after I got it done, I 
I kind of didn't like the lines being so thin. I thought they needed some more weight to them. So essentially what I did, and I'll just show you on this little piece right here, I'll go back and do the whole thing after we're done. But essentially what I did was just come back and kind of draw a little bit of a wavy line on one side and then fill that in. I didn't make it too thick. I just went out from the original line a little bit and colored it in and that just added some weight to that line and I felt like after I got I, that was the very last thing I did on that inspiration drawing um, because I felt like after I got all the rest of the stuff in there those lines just felt too thin they, they didn't feel like they could compete with the rest of the drawing and you can see that does make a difference so I just came back and made them a little not so straight gave them some curves and filled it in to give them some weight so like I said, at this point, I would just continue filling in my spaces. I've shown you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops. Yeah, seven, eight, nine new doodle patterns that you could do. Um, you can play with these if you want to. You can infuse your own design elements into this. This is just a different way to start. So if you don't want to start with the scribble like we did the first time, it's a different way to do it. Um, if you're looking for doodle ideas, the internet, Pinterest, I think I mentioned in the last set of videos, is always a good place. Um, I do have a board on my Pinterest where I have saved tons and tons and tons of doodle ideas, um, both my own and other people's. So if you go on Pinterest and search at Painted Willow Art and find me, um, you can look at my board. I think it's called Doodles and Zentangles or something like that. And there's tons of ideas so if you don't like necessarily these ideas but you like the concept of you know starting with the circles and filling them in you can always go on Pinterest and find other ideas to fill your circles in with okay um, I also like this one with the colors in the background because what we've done up to this point is coloring in you know individual spaces and I wanted to show you this is kind of a different way to do that if you don't want to color in the individual spaces um, and don't want to feel like it's necessarily like a coloring book type of thing, you can put a background wash of watercolors, whatever colors you choose, on there. Um, hopefully those show up okay. They're kind of light. By just splashing watercolors around, letting it dry, and then draw on top of it. So what you end up with is like this in the end. You've got your drawings, and you know green might come through a couple different drawings. And that one's part pink, part blue, part green, part... Um, part blue, part green. That one's got a little bit of everything. So it makes a really interesting background for um, your drawings as well. So there we go. As always, take these ideas and run with them. Um, you do not have to share these with anybody. The whole purpose is giving yourself some creative time and space. If you do choose to share them, I would love to see them. Um, after the last set of videos, y'all created some really amazing things. Um, and I do want to reiterate one more time, if you don't like what you ended up with, it's okay. This is very much a process over product type of thing. I'm, I'm showing you designs because I do want you to have something that you like looking at, but we all make bad art. Um, I make my share of crap art. Um, and it's okay because did you feel good while you were making it? Did you feel calmer by the time you finished? Did your racing thoughts slow down? If they did, the final outcome is completely irrelevant. The whole point is to give yourself the space and the grace to calm down, to relax a little bit, to let your mind think more creatively, to lower your blood pressure, all those good things that, that a drawing or creative practice does for you. Um, so I, I hope that when you get done, if you're not completely happy with it, you don't get discouraged and think, oh, I'm, I'm no good at this. I'm not going to do it anymore. Because if you notice a difference in the way you feel while you're making it, that's the whole point. Um, and skills will grow with time. 
So if you practice and keep drawing and keep painting and keep doodling and keep doing these things, you'll notice that your skills will grow over time. So you may not like what you create today, but a couple of weeks down the road, you might start liking what you're creating because your skills are growing. Um, this type of drawing is not, I don't believe something that people are just innately born with. This is all a skill you can learn. These lines are not complicated. The shapes are not complicated. It's just the way they're put together. And that's all skill set that you can learn. So keep practicing, keep drawing. As always, if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or message me on social media. Um, email me from my website. Whatever you'd like to do, however you'd like to get a hold of me, I'm happy to answer questions and uh, give it a go. Play with it. Have some fun. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to work on another video to show you this one. All right. I'll see y'all later.